So I have a confirmation to anybody who is waiting for their kingdom spouse right now. Um, I received this word from the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read to you from out of first Luke, um, the first chapter. And this is talking about um, Zachariah and Elizabeth. And I want you to listen to what God is doing in this scripture. And um, I just really felt when I was reading it that if this were for, if I were waiting on my kingdom spouse, this would have been a confirmation. I could feel it, it was all over me. So I know this is actually for you guys. So this is really exciting. Um, just as I'm reading this, really see if you hear the Lord in this. Obviously it's a scripture, but a lot of people ask us, how do I hear the voice of the Lord? How do I know it's him? Well, in this, when I'm reading this, you will feel an impression on your spirit. You will feel the presence of God. You will feel a chill. You will feel something if this is for you. So just go ahead and kind of go into this with me. Um, in the time of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of, I don't know what that word is. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. There's a lot in that. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years. Once when Zechariah, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and to burn incense. And when the time of the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing in, at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or any fermented drink and he will be filled with the holy spirit even from birth many many people of israel will, will will he will he bring back to the lord their god and he will go on before the lord in the spirit and power of elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous and to make ready a people prepared for the lord okay so when i read that i just felt the lord speaking through that because it was talking about when it talks about Elizabeth one being up and being and we know this through the Bible that God talks so much about he gives children to people that like shouldn't even be able to have them and so we saw that with Sarah we see that with Elizabeth where somebody is far past childbearing age and because God has favored that person. And it says here that, and a lot of what we teach on our channel is not just kingdom spouse, but it's a kingdom lifestyle that leads to a kingdom spouse. And this is a big takeaway that was just kind of added in there that I want to bring up to people. But it says they were both upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. Now, there is a lifestyle that goes with the kingdom spouse, and that's how you're gonna be able to discern the good thing from the God thing. That's how you're going to be able to take the fourth exit, not the third exit. Um, that's how you're gonna be able to move through the deceptions of the enemy, because as your kingdom spouse comes closer, there will be counterfeits. There will be things that happen where the enemy is trying to get you off course. He's trying to lead you in the opposite of direction of where God's leading you to make you miss it. And I know that there's a lot of you that already feel like you've missed it, but I'm here to tell you, you, you didn't miss it. You have not missed it. But it is extremely important to really take in what God is saying in this scripture because when you find your kingdom spouse, it's going to be because you're walking in the kingdom righteousness. You're walking with the Lord very closely because he's not going to bring you his chosen if you're not seeking him, if you do not have a close relationship with him. The only way you would miss it is if you weren't in communion with the Lord because you won't know the times and the seasons and you won't hear his voice and you won't know 
what he's trying to tell you is happening. And so it's so important that in this time of kingdom of your in this season of you coming to your kingdom spouse that you really really get in close communion with the Lord that you obey all of his that you observe all of his feasts you you do all of the things he requires you to do you keep the sabbath holy um things like that so really understanding the god that you serve really digging into the old testament the new testament and really understanding that, you know, when we do the feasts, they're not the Jewish feasts. We're not Jewish, but they are the Lord's feasts. So it's kind of like when we celebrate Christmas and when we, you know, celebrate Thanksgiving and 4th of July and all those things, those are very important holidays to us. But also there's this whole other realm of holidays that are so important. They're so special and there's blessings, covenant blessings that flow from them. And there are there are things that get unlocked during those times there are anointings that get poured out there are fr there are new mantles that get um that you get to receive god does so many things during his appointed times and his seasons and so you don't want to miss out on that but that's why we teach on the feasts that's why we teach on other things because there is a kingdom lifestyle that leads you to your kingdom spouse and it will help you sustain your relationship with your kingdom spouse because it's a godly relationship it's not of the world so the things of the world they don't keep it together they don't it, they don't operate together so when you are wanting that godly man or woman who obeys the lord walks in righteousness tries to be without sin as much as possible but repents very quickly there is a lifestyle that you lead where God does miraculous things for you. That's when you see miracles. When you're in alignment with the Lord, when you're doing the things that he's instructed his people to do, you get blessing and favor that is like no other. That's when the that's when somebody that is far beyond childbearing age has a child. That is when and then also it talks about whenever Zechariah didn't believe in his heart that that she was going to have a child. And so the angel sealed his lips and said, you're not going to get to talk until this baby's born because I'm not going to have you ruin what God is doing. And so there's also in that, if you're waiting on your kingdom spouse right now, and we've talked about it in previous videos, keeping your mouth shut um, until the appropriate time because you don't want to cancel the blessing and you don't want to give somebody else the power to cancel the blessing either. These are, these are miraculous things we're dealing with. We're dealing with the supernatural when we're talking about our kingdom spouse because this is not a worldly thing. And so it even the angel even shut his mouth because he did not believe. He knew in his heart he did not believe what he had told him. And he was not going to let him dismantle what God was doing because John the Baptist was coming right before the Messiah. And so he had to, he had to, he had to pave the way. He had to make, he had to start getting people in alignment. He had to make way for the King, right? So it was so important that that blessing come to pass. And it's the same way in our lives. Whenever we're getting connected with our kingdom spouse, and I've said this previously, it's because we're going to have a godly relationship. We're going to have godly children, and those children have destinies. As couples, we have destinies, and God's not going to let it get messed up. And so he has to know that he can trust you with it. He has to know that you're going to walk as if you're in front of an audience of one. And so I know that as women, we get excited. Like, I'm going to get this amazing man. I'm so excited. Of course, you want to call your girlfriend. You want to call somebody. You want to tell them. You want to share your joy. And it is such a test of spiritual and emotional maturity when you don't. When you don't do it. Because those people are people. And yes, there are absolutely people that you can trust, no doubt. But there also is a time for that. And like I put in my original video about how I met my kingdom spouse, you know, I said when it got really close, I told my very best friend because I knew I could trust him. And so it's also discerning who can you trust and when is the right time to tell them? Because I wanted a witness as to what God was about to do. If nobody could see it happen, that would kind of stink. But I didn't, I waited till pretty much right before things started to happen um, when it was still dead 
but enough time to see God work and and it was okay. So you just really have to use discernment in that. But this, I hope you felt that in your spirit, but I know that this was a confirmation to somebody that God is a miracle working God. And when God moves, he moves and he can make the impossible possible. And then it even talks about over here whenever, um, so it talks about whenever, so right after that, like six months later, um, Gabriel goes to Mary. Um, so it says, um, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David and a virgin, and the virgin was named Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored and the Lord is with you. How awesome. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and you will be with child and give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel since I am a virgin and the angel answered the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God even Elizabeth your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who has said who had who was said to be barren is in her sixth month for nothing is impossible with God so nothing is impossible with God. And so when I heard, when I was reading that, it just, it was so loud. And I was like, this is not for me and this is for them. And so I just, I hope that this has spoke to somebody because this is not possible. It's not possible. What you're wanting, it's not possible. But with God, all things are possible. And you know, a virgin is gets pregnant by, by God, you know? Uh, people right now that are you're you're thinking maybe that you won't be able to have kids and God already has kids lined up for you like that would not be possible people who are waiting on a healing like God has that for you you're waiting on a spouse God has that for you and so I know this is going to mean a lot of different things to, to different people but I know in my heart it was a confirmation of marriage for many people and so I just pray that that you're able to receive this and I hope that it spoke to you and and I just pray everybody is blessed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.